what, what are some things you think were left on the ice that probably could have transitioned into maybe goals or, or, or stopping them or getting more wins? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a it's a good question. I wish we had the answers to that. We obviously didn't have answers to the flus, but uh, you know, a lot of times in in playoff hockey, it comes down to matchups, and for whatever reason, we couldn't uh, seem to match up great against the Blues. They have a good team. It was, we were pretty similar similar in uh, as far as personnel. Um, it came down to special teams. It's so important in hockey that uh, you know. I, I think a lot of times, if they're scoring on the power play and we aren't. That, that kind of swings the game. So um, just a, a great year overall. Obviously not ideal to lose in the first round, but, um, you know, a lot, lot of good things happen, and I think a great future for the Wild, um, kind of getting that experience of, of the success and having some guys like Kirill Kaprizov do what he did. I think uh, the Minnesota Rat Wild really haven't had a player like that ever. So um, that totally changes the dynamic of, of the future and, um, you know, guys are going to want to come play here when they they see the culture that Billy Garen's building. And, um, you know, I think wild fans should be optimistic going forward. Yeah. And, you know, like any coach, they tell you he's going to go with line one, two, then four, then back to three. Just like that. I gave you some questions. I got to change it up. I got to call an audible. I got a question for you because you brought that up. Kirill Kaprizov, you've played with him. Sidney Crosby, you've seen him as well. Play with him. What what are some similarities in their games where you like where people are saying this Kaprizov kid could probably be, you know, has the potential to probably be one of the, the great scorers uh, of the game. You know, he's young, so it's early, but you know, what are some similarities you see between him and, and Crosby? Um, just about how they go about their day. I'm sure you saw it when you were playing in the NFL. Um, the elite guys uh, just have a different swagger, different mentality uh, when they step on the ice. Uh, I was telling the story about Sidney Crosby. He, he'd, he'd cut your throat in any board game, any if you're playing pig, whatever it is. He doesn't care if it's his grandma. Uh, he's going to win, but he's going to do it respectfully and uh, be your good buddy after the fact. So I, I think the guys that can turn that switch on and off, which uh, Kirill definitely has. I think, he, obviously, he's still young, but um, – you can tell the first day he came in, just the look on their eyes when they're playing. It's like, oh, man, yeah, you, you got it. It's something different. And, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, there's not much that separates uh, the, the top players from the middle of the pack players. But I think mentally, um, you know, the Michael Jordans, those guys that they want to when they get on the court, they don't care who you are. They're going to they're going to do their best to beat you and find whatever way. And Kirill's got that compete level. Sid obviously does. Um, so, and that, that from that actually leads to the entire team trickling down and uh, feeding off of that energy. So when you have guys like that, your best players that work the hardest um, and are holding other guys accountable, I think that that's how you create winning teams. So looking at being back in Minnesota, you know, you're a Minnesota kid, Blaine, you know, go for, you now play for the wild. Um, now looking for an opportunity. What are, what are your thoughts moving forward on what's next to come for, for Nick Bukestad? Yeah. So this is the first time I've actually been a free agent. So this is uh uncharted territory for me and uh, kind of a waiting game. You can't start talking to teams till July 14th. So, okay. Um, yeah, I guess we just, we, we wait and see. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure where, where I'm headed or what's what's uh, going to present itself here. But um, in the meantime, I'm just trying to train. I'm back on campus training with uh, Cal Dietz. And uh, there's a lot of alumni that go back there that are still playing. And, um, you know, that makes it fun. And, you know, guys push each other. So it's it's been a good summer so far. And I guess we'll find out in a couple of weeks where uh, where I'm headed. And when you look at the NHL right now, name of names, you know, you got all these big time names out there, uh, you know, with the New York Rangers, you got the Pittsburgh Penguins that have some stars, um, you know, when, when you just Ovechkin, you know, all these names jump out when you when you think about it, uh, you know, Subban and, and so on and so forth. Is there a guy right now that you're like, if a team called and it was even money, let's just say it was the Red Wings and the New York Rangers, even money, is there a team out there where you're like, well, I really want to play with this guy. So that's where I'm going to go. Uh, yeah, that's a good question, Ron. Uh, I don't know if I want to throw my cards out there right now. 
uh, I, I'm seeing a lot of viewers, so I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. we're not big enough yet. We're not big enough yet. We're not big enough yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think just uh, for me, it was playing in Pittsburgh was kind of uh, it was, I guess, eye opening just seeing Crosby the, for the first time on on the ice and yeah. how fast that practice was in comparison to what I had experienced previously. Um, it was another level. So for me, that was fun because it's like, wow, this everyone's competing. Everyone's going 100% because the best player in the world is going 100%. So, um, you know, you, you see the McDavid's and the uh, McKinnon's. I don't know. <laughs> They'd all well, I'll, give you, I'll give you a better one. I'll give you an old yeah. school name, like Steve Eiserman, okay. all these you know old school names. Who's the guy, if you can go back, like if you're like, if you could be born earlier, what, what guy would you want, would you have loved to play with? Yeah, that's a really good question too. Um, probably Mario Lemieux. Okay. Okay. Familiar. Yeah, he's a Pittsburgh, um, former Pittsburgh player, and uh, did he have missing he, teeth at one point? Yeah, I'm sure most of us do. <laughs> I actually still have all my teeth, thankfully. So knock on wood. Spent almost ten years in the league without losing a tooth, but uh, that that's pretty uncommon for us hockey guys. I think the Canadians think it's cool to lose their teeth. It's kind of. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Mario Lemieux, that guy, I think if he wasn't injured as much as he was, they say he might have, might have went down as one of the greatest or as the greatest of all time. But, um, that's a debate for another day that I can't, I can't argue. <laughs>